I put this brilliant joke by XKCD, clatter, clatter, excuse me, you're jiggling your leg up and down. It's traveling through the floor and making my desk resonate. Oh, I didn't even realize. I'll stop. Actually, if you can just shift the frequency up by 15%, I think you can get resonance with Steve's desk instead. <laughs> Here are the calculations. Let's coordinate and try to spill string. Well, we're going to be talking about resonance, actually, and damping. So first of all, let's talk about natural frequency. And we're going to call that, actually, F0. That's normally how we write it, and we measure it in hertz. Okay, so this is going to be the idea here, is natural frequency is this F0. So this is because a system can oscillate at a natural frequency. So in other words, we're, we're assuming there's no friction or damping. But basically, if you hit something or, or oscillate it or vibrate it at a, a very specific frequency, then you can make its own amplitude go bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, uh, here could be a question like, hey, calculate the natural frequency of a spring mass system. You might think, whoa, how do I do that? Well, we have an equation, actually, for the period of a spring mass system. It goes 2 pi times square root of, uh, and it's m over k. Okay, well, if that's the case, then how do we uh, then find the natural frequency? Well, remember that frequency is 1 over the period. And this is the period. So that means then that the frequency must just then be, let's see, it's just 1 over, well, 2 pi square root of m over k. And if I want to fix this up a little bit uh, nicer, then I can actually say, well, by the way, I should also call this f0 now. This will be the natural frequency. Um, and then this here will be, let's see, 1 over 2 pi will still be a 1 over 2 pi. But remember what happens if I divide by a fraction? I can multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll put the k on top, the m on the bottom. So it'll still be square root, but it'll be k on the top, m on the bottom. And there we go. So this is how we can actually calculate the natural frequency. Because you just find, well, what's the frequency of something? It's just 1 over the period. And you have an equation for the period. OK, so let's look now at resonance. So when you vibrate a system at its natural frequency, which we just talked about before, this natural frequency would be F0, uh, then the amplitude will increase. So let's look at what happens now that we've got the amplitude of a system, and we've got what's called the driving frequency. This could be like you're hitting something at a very, you know, like what's the frequency at which you're hitting it. So we're going to say driving because you're, you're hitting it or vibrating it or making it move, you know, artificially, so to speak. You're hitting it at this frequency. So what would happen is this. The amplitude then of a system might be, you know, sort of the straight same amplitude, but as you get closer and closer to the um, natural frequency, then it'll go up to a maximum, and then of course it'll probably be flat again afterwards. So something like this. So, so what is this value right here? This value will be, of course, the natural frequency. So what that says is, hey, as you're tapping it or hitting it at something closer to the natural frequency, the amplitude might increase. And of course, as you reach the natural frequency, the amplitude is at a maximum. So that, I think, is the key piece of information you need to know about for resonance. So there's plenty of examples of resonance. I mean, the one I thought, for example, is pushing someone on a swing. So, you know, if, if someone is swinging back and forth, depending on when you actually push that swing, if you time it wrong, you know, I mean, of course, it doesn't help. But if you time it just right, if you hit it, you know, at that natural frequency, so to speak, so you push the person on their way up, then you wait and you push them again, you can make the amplitude increase. So this would actually work. Also, you can actually break a glass with sound. If you hit, for example, or you vibrate a glass, so let's say you put like a, a really powerful speaker right beside this glass right here, and you happen to get it at the sound that makes it vibrate, this glass will actually start to vibrate. And of course, if it vibrates too much, you know, it can, you know, the amplitude is too large, it can actually break. And so here's a little video of just that happening. So watch this one here. This is a slow motion camera, but look at it vibrate, and of course, then it breaks. So this is possible possible too. You just have to hit this glass, so to speak, or vibrate the glass at its natural frequency. And microwaves, what do they do? I mean, your microwave oven, uh, it just excites molecules and it has them excited at their natural frequency. Of course, what happens is they heat up and they heat up, obviously, these water molecules. And that's why we use microwaves to heat things. So let's talk about damping now. So this is real life situations where friction causes the vibrations to have less amplitude. So it's not a perfect world. So for example, if we have no damping, then something, for example, an oscillation might just, well, it just keeps oscillating. So it just goes like this, for example, then like this, then like this. It just keeps going up and down. There's no difference in the amplitude. Do you notice it's just kind of constant? At least I'm trying to make it constant here. 
Okay, what about underdamped? Well, that means it's it's uh, it's damped, sure. So but, so in other words, maybe it goes like this to here. Maybe then the amplitude is less, then maybe it's less, then maybe it's less, then maybe it's less, and then maybe then it sort of, maybe it stops like that. That could be underdamped. But what about if something is overdamped? Well, that's like when there's so much friction, basically it just starts off and just goes kind of, maybe just kind of, that's it. In other words, it's just there's so much friction, it just, pff, it stops the motion. And what about critically damped? This is going to be the minimum you need to get back to equilibrium. So, for example, something as critically damped would be just like this here, and it would just reach like this here. So this would be something that's critically damped. It's the minimum needed to actually get back to equilibrium, where this is displacement here, this is zero displacement, so that would be the equilibrium. So let's look at the effects now of the driving frequency and what it does to the damping. And again, just as a comparison here, so we'll do forced resonance, but this time with no damping, and that's when it goes, I've shown you this kind of graph like this right here before at least, it goes like this right here is what it would look like, where this right here is F0. Okay, now what if you do have damping? Well, um, again, as a reference here, I'll just put this first one here just so we can see right here. This will be with, you know, no damping. I'll maybe uh, even label like this. I'll say no damping. And by the way, this right here was at the natural uh, frequency right here. That was no damping. And we'll put that one like this right here maybe. And I'll say like that. I'll say that was F0. Now what if you have some light damping, just a little bit? Well then what's going to happen is this. It's going to go like this here and maybe like that, for example. This might be light damping. Now what if I have even heavier damping than this? Well then it's going to go something maybe like, you know, like that. So this might be, you know, more damping. So do you notice what happens then to the um, to the shapes of these curves here. As you do more and more damping, what happens? In other words, as your damping increases, what happens here? Your amplitude decreases. Do you notice it goes down and down? So that goes this way. And your frequency of your maximum amplitude, in other words, this, this peak right here, do you notice it's shifted to the left and shifted to the left? In other words, that frequency goes to the left. So this is an important piece right here you need to know that uh, the more you damp something, the more damping there is, the lower the maximum amplitude is, which should actually make sense. The more friction there is, it shouldn't, you know, shouldn't have as much amplitude. But what's interesting is that it also changes the frequency. So the uh, natural frequency of a system actually shifts to the left. Interesting.